Growing up, I loved computer games, and a childhood dream of mine was always to work with computer games. But I had a problem. Which dream would I follow? This bucket list I wrote when I was 14 <laughs> highlights this problem. It was titled, Things to Do Before I Die. Now, isn't it funny how someone at that age can realize that we all have a limited amount of time on this earth to achieve our dreams? For me, it was a real problem because I had to prioritize which dream I would immerse myself in. And I really do believe that that's the key to achieving your dream, and that's to immerse yourself in the real world, developing the skills needed to achieve your dream. You could say that becoming the next Bruce Lee was high on my list, but it was clear from a very young age that uh, I wanted to work with computer games. I eventually chose the medical field, but it didn't take long for me to merge my, my career in medicine with my love for computer games. As a young doctor, I diagnosed one of the first patients in Australia with internet gaming addiction, and I'll call this patient Adam. Adam spent every waking moment of his life online in the virtual world. Even back then, even my supervising psychiatrist didn't know what this condition was. So all of a sudden, all that time that I spent in front of a computer screen made me somewhat of an expert. On the one hand, my medical expertise allowed me to explore how Adam's childhood experiences shaped his mental illness. And on the other hand, it was my computer gaming expertise that allowed me to explore how he was behaving online. And what I realized was, Adam was completely immersed in his online world. He was not just playing through his avatar, he was his avatar. It was his persona and his uh, identity. And this really fascinated me. Exploring the online psychology of Adam's online world was enough inspiration for me to become a psychiatrist, where it really is a privilege to explore another person's world, and even more fascinating to see how this relates to their online world. This year, I was lucky enough to follow my passion for internet games and go to uh, internet addiction clinics in countries like Singapore, <coughs> India, and South Korea, learning how to help young people uh, balance the real world with the virtual world. And then one day I realized, hey, I am now a video game doctor, <laughs> combining two of my childhood dreams together. And when I started on my journey, I thought to myself, wow, how is it possible to be addicted to an internet game? Isn't it just another form of play? Well, unfortunately, from my investigation, it's no longer simply child's play. Internet gaming can have a serious effect on a child's mental health. And in severe cases, children do not know how to stop, they don't know when to stop, and they can't stop. And internet gaming takes priority over their lives above their schoolwork, friends, and families. This year, the Australian Health Department released national statistics on teenage use of the internet and games. And they found that 10% of all Australian teenagers spend more than nine hours a day online. And that's just weekdays. They also found that teenagers suffering from depression were more likely to have addictive problems associated with their internet and gaming use. And a possible reason for this is that when someone is under distress, internet gaming is the ultimate distraction. However, if you continue to use this strategy, you might uh, miss out on important life lessons on how to deal with problems that cause this distress. They also found that 78,000 teenagers Australia-wide are suffering from addictive problems with, associated with their internet and gaming use. 78,000 teenagers is like filling up the Adelaide Oval Stadium one and a half times. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our new brain drain. We've been losing our talented young people to cities interstate and overseas, but now we're also losing them to cities online. So how do we get to this point? Well, if I were to ask the question, do children need the internet, everyone in this room would say yes. But before we welcome this technology into our, into our lives, laptops, tablets, and mobile devices, we didn't really ask this question, did we? You know, parents and teachers and clinicians uh, around the world are looking for guidance and crying for help. Children don't just see these uh, devices as a way to uh, learn and have fun, they also see it as a way to immerse themselves, and that's immerse themselves in an online world, a virtual, digitally constructed world. And immersion is the feeling of being in that world. Now, have you ever seen someone stare at a computer screen as though they were lost and in a completely different world? Well, they are under the spell of immersion, and immersion is the feeling of being in that world. Now, we can get this feeling uh, doing things in real life like reading a book, watching a movie, or learning a new skill. But internet gaming is much more immersive. And if something breaks this spell for us, we no longer believe we're in that world. 
So when you ask a child to get off the computer or uh, finish a game, that's why they get annoyed or angry, because you've just broken that spell for them. Now, immersion alone is not the cause of internet gaming addiction, but the problem is you can't be in two places at once. If you're immersed online, then you're not really participating in the real world, and you might be missing out on skills needed uh, to achieve your dream. And we all want our children to be immersed in the real world, but the real world spell is a very weak spell. Things take a long time, and we're constantly reminded by boredom, which breaks that spell for us. I, I once had a 10-year-old boy come into the clinic uh, asking for a medical certificate to get out of school camp. And I thought to myself, isn't camping fun? And the child responded, no, it's dirty, it's uncomfortable, and there are bugs. So I asked them, what's your favorite computer game? And like many kids their age, responded, Minecraft. So I put it to them, well, isn't camping like real life Minecraft? You get to build tents, make spears, and sit around the campfire with all your friends. You can almost see the penny drop in their mind. And we all want our children to be immersed in the real world. And the key message is we must teach them how to immerse themselves in the real world. Even Marcus Person learned how to make Lego block masterpieces before he would go on to create the most uh, popular internet game of all time for young kids, <laughs> Minecraft, also known as the virtual Lego of the internet. Parents keep telling me, but we've tried everything. Uh, we, we, our child used to play sports and uh, hang out with their friends. And it's kind of true. A lot of times, families are fighting a losing battle. How can they protect their children when uh, they're constantly surrounded by technology? And take Adelaide, for example. Adelaide introduced the Adelaide Free Wi-Fi Network throughout the CBD, a first for Australia. Whilst we celebrate our internet connections, this should not be at the cost of our connection to the real world. Another concern that I have is, uh, how can parents protect their children when uh, technology companies are marketing to their children? And we've had this conversation before with alcohol, tobacco, and fast food companies. Why not technology companies? And I think TEDx is really is the perfect platform for us to challenge our tech industry leaders to set an ethical standard and not market potentially addictive games to young children. Unfortunately, we're seeing a history repeating itself with, in the past, tobacco companies uh, giving away free cigarettes because they knew that if they had a smoker, they had a smoker for a lifetime. We're seeing that now again with uh, free games and free apps targeted at young children and even infants. So now we have the opportunity to ask ourselves this question. Do babies really need internet? Well, from a research point of view, we don't really know yet because we don't have the research studies. But what we do know is infant development. And we know that infants are undergoing a critical period where parts of their brain are being pruned that are not being used. So like all children, Babies must learn real life skills first. They should be learning how to use their thumb and gripping onto objects, not swiping on a screen. I've even heard of babies swiping on a picture book, expecting the page to change like a screen. My final message for today is this. Remember, this was a personal message from my 14-year-old self to my future self. Remember that we all have a limited amount of time on this earth to achieve our dreams. So the next time a young child asks you for a screen or a device, it's OK to say no but I really do encourage you to help them learn a real life spell, help them to immerse themselves in this beautiful city of ours, and who knows, they might even discover something new about Adelaide. Thank you.